Mr. Chairman, Lord Ron, Ben Flatter, Mr. Vinay Sharma, MP, distinguished guests on the dais, ladies and gentlemen. Before I begin, I just got to pick up something. This will be the video. Before I begin, I would like to pay tribute to our founder who gave us a secular and democratic India where equality for all is enshrined in the constitution. In 1947, two countries were created. One to promote one to promote people on the basis of their religion and the other to promote human freedom regardless. The results are in front of us. One, one is increasingly becoming unstable and her citizens are turning on each other simply in the name of religion. The mother on the, the other is producing world class citizens like Dr. Manmohan Singh, Ratan Tata, Lord Dhanakia, Lord Rana, Badness Flagger, Gurinder Sharma, Vijay Malaya, Ashwira Rai, Shah Khan, Lakshmi Mittal, A.R. Rahman, the list is endless. Where, where India is rising, so are Indians, wherever we, have, we are. Simply because we are a product of a secular and democratic India. And as a result, we can integrate into any society easily and quickly. It is therefore paramount to preserve the secular and democratic nature of India at any cost. No country can move forward by systematically discriminating against a section of her own population on the base of gender, race or religion. We must therefore always put the interest of India first and every time if we are to continue to enjoy respect in the world as we are doing today. I am glad that we are here as Indians and not on the basis of our race, religion, gender or political ideology. What unites us is the love for our mother India. This is how we must remain and make her proud of our love for one another. In the word of my late father, whose book I brought and there are some copies over there, there is somebody who wants to see. In the word of my late father, who was assassinated in 1947 before the independence because he opposed the creation of a country on the basis of hatred for others. He said, if you create a country on the basis of hatred, how will you remove that base? In his word, India unity is like the color of rainbow and its charm would diminish if one were removed. As they say, together we stand and divide and we fall. If we do not have religious harmony in India, all this economic and industrial growth will go out of the window. In this ever-shrinking world, the role of diaspora is becoming increasingly important to say the least. For example, in business we empower people and offer them training and coaching so that they can achieve more for the success of any business. Similarly, the Indian diaspora should be treated as an integral part of India and used to promote India and her values wherever we have made our homes. Needless to say, it will generate better understanding <coughs> of India amongst different people of the world and that too at no extra cost. Of late, we commend the actions of the government of India, taking steps to bring the diaspora closer to the country of our origin. Ladies and gentlemen, often Indian diplomats come for a foreign posting for a short tenure and return soon after they begin to understand the country. The diaspora, on the other hand, provides a constant and permanent permanent with India. In business, we fall link with local partners to gain local knowledge, which is essential for market penetration. Similarly, India's even closer relationship with its diaspora will enable her to gain invaluable knowledge about various countries to develop cordial relationships. Where India's emergence as an economic power is bringing respect to her diaspora, 
where the achievement of our diaspora is also bringing respect to India. <coughs> we have earned respect throughout the world with our loyalty, hard work and achievement for the host of, host, for the host of countries. As a result, we have also brought respect to our mother India. Let's see how the diaspora is benefiting India. Approximately over 25 million of us are scattered all over in, in over 100 countries flying the flag for India. They say you can take Indians out of India, but you cannot take India out of Indians. As a result, we will always remain Indians no matter what clothes we wear, what food we eat, or what language we speak. By immigrating, we have offered our jobs and homes to our fellow countrymen and at the same time help alleviate the unemployment and housing situation of India to some degree. We have strengthened India's foreign reserve with our remittances as well as financial state of our loved ones back home. More importantly, we have created demand for Indian cuisine, spices, music, films, fashion, religious effects wherever we have settled. This has helped develop trade between India and many countries of the world where we have settled in large numbers. We have helped earn much needed revenue and also generated employment, not only in India but also abroad with our efforts. You only have to see the amount of planes landing and taking off across Indian city, generating employment, trade and tourism for India. This can only be good for India's economy, trade, tourism, and her standing in the world as a global player. It will not be an exaggeration to say that each one of us is an ambassador helping to promote a better understanding of India and her culture across the globe. In the process, we are bringing India closer to the world and world closer to India. The foreign investments are pouring in, not only due to the size of its market, or also due to the fact that diaspora is working with people all over the world and generating a better understanding for India. Our interaction with the locals help generate a clear sense about India and its people and as a result, subconsciously, they feel that they already know India. Many have become accustomed to Indian cuisine and as a result, feel at home whilst working and traveling across India. Where the diaspora has made tremendous strides economically in so many countries, there it has also made significant inroad into the political life of those countries. We have example here, Panas Plather, who has given us the memorial gate, <coughs> the monument to pay tribute to the soldiers who fought in the First and Second World War. <laughs> Lord Rana, champion of Indian values and promoting tolerance wherever he is and also Lord Dalakia, you heard how he championed the cause of India. Varinda Sharma, I remember when 26-11 took place, Mr. he mobilized member of parliament of both the house, members from both the House of Parliament to condemn that barbaric act against innocent Indians going about the business in no uncertain terms. We are very proud of you for your love for India. The net gain to India is better nation, net gain because of diaspora is better nation with, the, with including sorry the net gain because of the political activity for India better relationship with the rest of the world student exchange program as well as greater trade tourism between various countries. We have gathered together for this conference, not under any compulsion, but out of our commitment and love for Mother India. Our commitment is genuine and stem out of our love. I would like to see links with, with diaspora strengthened so that our next generation remains connected with the country of their origin. <coughs> 